Hello there, this is Shauna Lofi with Shauna Lofi Portraits. Today I'm going to demo the Bellevue uh, makeup actions I used on this particular image. Here you can see in her before image, her um, I needed some help with some of the makeup. There wasn't quite the coverage that I was looking for on here, so I'm going to touch up some of the eyes, brighten them up, um, add a little bit more um, eyeshadow and some lipstick, and then I'm going to go do an overall, um, th uh, overall action called Flawless Skin. And then I'm going to touch up the hair and get rid of these flyaways. Here's the after image. You can see that there's quite a bit of difference here. Um, I'm going to go through uh, the actions that I purchased through, it's called Bellevue Actions. Um, I think it's BellevueActions.com where I purchased it. I, I got the uh, package that has like three different groups in it. I think it was $98. There's some different options there for smaller packages if you want to go that route. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to go into the original image, and as you can see, I have got um, some gray hairs I need to edit out, some flyaways, and then just some basic editing on the face. And then I want to get rid of this little bit of finger that's showing right here that we don't need. All right, so I'm going to get started using, um, there's three different ways you can do this. All right, and you can touch up the um, little spots in the skin using um, the healing tool, the clone tool, or the patch tool. So I'm going to show you with the patch tool. I'm going to start off with this little spot right here. I'm just going to select this area and click and drag it to a skin spot that's fairly similar to it and deselect Command D. And you can see it's pretty, pretty well covered. I'm going to go into my history palette and go back to the previous um, before I edited. And I'm going to show you what it does with the healing brush. Again, you're going to have to select a little area. You see the little crosshair show up. Select an area of the skin that's similar, and then cover it up. Very simple like that. And go back in to history, and I'll show you with the clone tool. I'm going to get a little smaller brush that's a little too big. Okay. And again, select an area that's similar in the skin, and then just cover it up. This one you might have to do a couple passes. I have the opacity set at 48 because I don't want, um, I just want to do a gentle, um, uh, cloning because I don't want it to look obvious that I did it. It still looks a little obvious here, so I'd have to play with it a little bit more just to do a couple passovers it and um, just get a little bit more. This one's a little bit more difficult. I think I prefer the patch tool and the healing brush the most. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to use the healing tool. Oops. It looks like a little band aid. If you click and hold, on that tool, because I think originally it's the patch tool, it'll show up as this on your tools palette in the default. If you click and hold on it, you'll see this little um, drop um, and the little box up here that has some different options for this particular tool. You can turn it into the healing tool, the spot healing tool, the patch tool, um, the content aware move tool, and then the red eye tool. So I'm just going to go to the healing brush tool and I'm going to select a little bit of skin and just cover it up. I'm just kind of cover up the whole thing like that. There we go. So I kind of like that. It takes away the redness and the spot itself. So we're going to do that again with some other spots that are here. And I'm not holding down. I'm just clicking on it with my mouse. I'm not holding down the option key. So it's just selecting the areas, kind of the mid-tones of the areas around the skin and where that spot is. And I'm going to do some of the, edit some of this hair on the eyebrows. It needs to go away. Oops, that's just too obvious. And you do little spots, little spots. Don't click and drag it across. I'll show you right here. It doesn't look very good. So I might need to sample a little bit more of the skin over here. Sample a little bit more here. Holding down my option key on my keyboard and sampling the skin near the areas that I'm cloning. I'm sorry, using the healing brush tool on. Just cleaning up a little bit of that eyebrow. Okay, I'm going to zoom back out. And I need to do some more spotting. I think see some right here. Again, holding on the option key. And clicking and covering, clicking and covering. It's very mundane and it get, you know, if you have a lot of these, it's gonna it's gonna be a little while. And this particular image doesn't have a lot that I need to cover up. It's just just little bits of flaws that nobody really wants to see there. They expect us photographers to cover up these things. Okay, and I'm holding my space bar down so I can go around and hold and you know, hold and drag and click around the other parts of the face that I want to get to, rather than zooming out and zooming back in again. 
Again, holding the space bar down. See a couple more spots that I need to cover here. And holding the space bar down again. Click and, just click and cover, click and cover. I like to do a, just a once over pass of the skin just to make sure I get all these little things out because the, the flawless um, skin won't get all these things. And if you do put the opacity really high, it starts to look really fake. And I just want to do a light coverage to make it look like she has a little bit, a um, little bit more, oops, did not hold my face right down there, so that her skin doesn't look fake. I just want a little bit of coverage of that flawless skin. So get all the spots that we need to get while we're here. Okay. Well, I'm sorry that it's going to get kind of boring to watch, but if you're following along while you're editing your own picture, that'd be great. Okay, a couple more spots I see. Okay, holding my space bar again. And see another spot. Okay, let's see. Let's drag around the face a little bit more. Go zoom out. I think I got all the little spots. Oop, I'm going to this one right here. This I'm going to have to use the, um, the cloning tool on. I need to get a larger brush. And I want to clone this area close to the skin. You see there's a little bit of, of, of shadow in that skin. Oh, I'm going to put the opacity back at 100. And just clone above it. And I don't want to duplicate that little freckle there. And I'll take that freckle out while we're at it. And I don't want to like it. I'm going to go back into the patch tool again. Zoom in. Larger brush. There we go. All right. And I see a couple more. Just really quick, go through these and cover them up. Pulling down my option key while I'm doing it. And I think I'll get that little hair out of there. Oops, give me a smaller brush. Again, I'm just holding the option key down, getting that little flyaway out of there. You see another one? Good. And another one, option. Click and drag across. And get this one. Yeah. You can spend all day getting flyaways on if you really wanted to. I just want to get the obvious ones that are just bothering me. Okay, let's we'll zoom back out. All right, now let's get rid of um, some of the flyaways around. I know. Let's go to the let's do the makeup tool so she can get some something going on this face here. So I'm going to go to my actions, and I'm going to go look for the flawless skin, and I want to use flawless skin close up shot. So I'm going to click on that and go ahead and hit play, and it'll run the action. It's going to take a minute. Okay, so computer seems to be taking a little bit of time here. Usually it doesn't take this long. I must have something open that I don't need to have open. Yeah, let's close out. Click this. And put this and get off the internet. Good. All right. So let's run, run the action. And if you drop down, go into your layers palette and click the um, little arrow, you see all the different levels that it has. You can click on all these and just do extra editing to all the different. Um, uh, let me zoom. Let's see if I can zoom. No, nope, can't zoom in here. Um, yeah, you just go in and you can edit in a different different areas, but I just want to click on the, the uh, main part of the layer. And if you um, go to your tools palette right here, you'll see this little box with the black and white. This will be uh, mask on, max, mask off. I'm sorry, mask off would be black, mask on would be um, white. And then if you use your um, a regular brush, let me go back to the brush palette here. And I'll just demonstrate for you this really, quick, really quickly. Okay, masking on at, right now that the opacity of this layer I set at 40, I'm going to show you at 100, just so you can, I can show you a very dramatic before and after here. 
This would be brushing on the texture, okay? And then clicking on the um, onto the, the black box, this is going to be masking off. So you can see how it just takes that what you just put on right off. Okay, so I want to go back to 40 because I just want to have a light dusting of this action placed on my skin on the skin of my subject here. So I'm going to go through and start, oops, mask on a little bit of this texture. Looks good. So you can still see the skin. Um, it doesn't look alien. It still looks very human. It's not taking away the texture of the skin. It's just giving this little bit of effect on there to clear up the skin. I need a smaller brush into smaller spots here. Good. Just going over it a little bit. And again, if you have a Wacom tablet, this is a lot easier. I am still using a mouse. I know I need to go buy one of those. It'll make my life a lot easier. Okay, and just double check in here. Make sure I get everything. Good. I'm going to zoom out. And you can see a huge difference. Let me turn this layer on and off. It's just a huge difference right there. I might want to bring some of the shadows back, so I'm going to lower the opacity even more and mask off in some of these spots right here so I can still see her smile line. I'm not losing everything. I don't want her to look like a porcelain doll, but I do want to get rid of some of these imperfections, and I don't want to lose the shadow on the nose. I'm just zooming in a little bit more. Now I'm holding my spacebar and command key down, and you can see that when I do that, this little um, magnifying glass appears, and that just means you can zoom in, drag out, or zoom back out. If you drag into the upper uh, left-hand corner, you click and drag to the upper right-hand corner. It zooms in and zooms out. There you go. All right, and I'm just going to, again, masking off just a little bit of the stuff I don't want covering up. And that looks good. All right, and then I can lower over the um, lower the opacity of the entire layer if I still think that it's not quite, it's still looking a little fake um, and powdery. I can bring down the opacity of that entire layer. So here's it with it with it out, and with it 100%. I'm going to bring it down to probably about 80, and I think that looks really good. I I think it got just enough out that we needed to. I'm going to zoom back out, and I'm going to turn it completely on and off. You can see. It's just, a, it's just a slight coverage that it needed. Okay, now let me go into the, um, the mouth area. I'm going to brighten up the smile right here. And I'm going to use an action from the Bellevue collection called, um, where is it? Oh, Teeth Bleach. So I'm going to click on that. It's under Sparkling Eyes and Teeth. And I'm going to click Play to run the action. Okay. And again, you can drag down the layer and you can decrease the yellows or brighten it up. I'm going to do an overall because I want to do both. I want to not only brighten it up, I also need to get rid of some of the yellowing. So I'm going to go into my brush tool. And again, same thing on and off the mask. I want to turn it on. Bring my brush down a little bit smaller. I'm going to go over each tooth. And my opacity set too low. So I'm going to go up, bring it to about 50-ish. I'm going to go over your tooth. Looks good. Okay, I'm just quickly sweep it over. All right, good. It's a huge difference. Let me turn it on and off so you can see that. And you can see I need a little bit extra care on these two front teeth, so I'm going to go into the, um, I think I'm going to use the cloning tool. So I just need a smaller area right here. And let's see, a little bit smaller brush. And I'm going to just click and select a little bit of this um, tooth right here. Oops, I need to go into the bottom layer <laughs> where her face is. Not the, not the action layer, but the, the layer of the actual um, photograph. And I'm just going to cover up a little bit of this extra spot. I don't really mind the highlight as much not quite as noticeable. Okay, good. I think this one needs a little bit more. Good. Okay, 
Now you can see that she's got a little bit of a smaller tooth here and I can clone this tooth here and copy it over here just to fix that little bit. So I'm going to go into the original layer, the bottom layer where it says background, and I'm going to use my lasso tool to select this tooth and a little bit of the extra tooth because I'm going to erase away this extra that I don't need. I'm going to hit Command C to copy, Command V as in Victor to paste, and then I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, to flip horizontally because I need it to be the opposite tooth. It has to be, it's not going to be exactly the same, but it's going to be flipped. Okay, and I'm just going to line it up with this other tooth right here. Then I'm going to erase back what I don't need. And you can also use your clone, your, your glare mask tool. I'm going to show you how to do it with that because you may, uh, if you're new to this, you may make a mistake and you would have to do this whole process over again of copying and pasting. But if you use your layer mask tool, you won't have to because you can bring it um, back and bring it, bring it back down if you need to. So I'm going to click on the layer masking tool. You're in layer one. I'm going to put this called, I'm sorry, call this layer tooth clone. Oops. All right. And I'm going to click on the layer mask icon in the, in the layer palette. All right. And if you can click on each individual um, layer thumbnail, this is for the layer itself. So that's the layer of the tooth. This is the thumbnail for the mask. We need to click on that that box in order to get started. So I'm going to turn the layer back on and I'm going to take away, let me get a smaller brush here, I'm going to take away from this uh, layer. So I'm going to brush out, mask over, give me a little bit more opacity here. Okay, I'm going to take away the excess of this image that we don't need. I just want to keep the tooth and a little bit of the gum to make it look like it was realistically there. Oops, it's too, too big. I just masked it all the way. Go back to my history palette. Okay, sorry about that. I need a smaller brush, so I accidentally clicked a really large one. Okay, I'm just going to just very easily. Now, if I over, over mask and I took away too much, I just select the mask back the white uh, box in my tool palette, and I can put it right back in. And I'm going to take away this little sliver of color here that we don't need because it's just to be blending with the other tooth next to it. And you can see the color is a little off on this one. So I'm going to go in to the um, tooth brightening. Whoops. Bring it up a little bit, image, adjust, and just go to the levels. I need to add a little of, yeah, oops, sorry, in the original layer, <laughs> image, adjust, levels. And I'm just going to bring that tooth back a little bit. Good. So I'm just taking the midtones and lowering them a little bit in the highlight and bringing it down a little bit. Now it makes it a little bit brighter and kind of matches. And I think I need a little bit of yellow to bring that back in. Oops. There we go. Now it's matching. Good. Zoom back out. You can see there is another tooth there and it just covering up the old one. So let me turn this layer on and off so you can see the difference. It seems like a subtle thing, but it makes a huge difference in the smile. And again, I you ask your client before you do this, ask them if it's something that they want to have edited. Don't go ahead and take the liberty of doing it yourself and then finding out that they're offended by this. Ask them first. All right, so let's get to um, the eyeshadow part. I'm going to click on the layer above the teeth, go into my actions, and I'm going to go to eyeshadow. So I'm going to go into the makeup artist section, and I'm going to click on, where is it? Eyeshadow natural palette, and I'm going to click play and let it run the action. And as you can see, you're getting a, lots of different options for um, eyeshadow. Okay. And I'm going to click on that layer, drop it down, and I'm going to go through and see which color I want. She's got kind of a mauve color of her, on her eyes, so I want to kind of match that. I'm going to select this um, Natural sh Shadow 17. And close that layer a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. 
There's a natural staff 17. Ah, there you go. Okay, and I need to get a larger brush. Oops, let me close that up so it doesn't get in the way. Right now it's at 12, I need a little bit bigger. Good. So maybe, uh, maybe about 115, 120, good. And my opacity on this layer is to 25, and my brush opacity, I wanna lower that because I just wanna dust it on here. Just a little bit. I think I need a little more flawless skin on this one too. I'm gonna go into a flawless skin layer and cover up a little bit of the imperfections on her eyelid. And we can also use our helium brush tool. Oops, I'm going to the original layer. And I'm just going to cover that up good. Let's see. Oops, oops. You should zoom in on that one. Okay, I'm zooming in. And I'm going to cover up a little bit more here. Get rid of this flyway. And again, back into our eyeshadow, back on 17. Good. And a larger brush. Oops, Oops sorry, I'm not on the right brush. <laughs> All right. Now I'm just going to just dust on a little bit of the eyeshadow. And I'm going to do that over here couple of passes and then I can bring it off a little bit because I got covered up the eye and a little bit of the eyebrow just to take some of that eyeshadow off of there. Okay. All right and I'm going to collapse that one and let's see I think she needs a little bit of eyeliner. I see some something here that needs to be fixed. I'm going to go into um, the cloning tool for this one. Go into the original layer. Actually, you know, I think I do that with false skin. Let me go into that. And flip your brush, and make a smaller brush. And I see just this little spot right here where there's extra eyeshadow, it doesn't need to be there. So I'm just gonna go in with the false skin and cover that up. And I see this little bit of um, goop of eyeliner I wanna get rid of. So I'm gonna go to 100% opacity on this and cover that up. Well, let's do it with the healing brush tool. Doesn't want to cover it up. And go back into your original layer. Option, click the part you want to cover. And make sure that the opacity for that is set. Well, I think I'm going to go into cloning tool. I think it would be better coverage there. There we go. Okay. Just gonna clip that out. Okay. And I see a little bit here that needs to be covered up. Oh, oops. Yeah, the pass needs to come down. And just take away a little bit of this. <coughs> and go into the patch tool. This is just not enough. Zoom back out again. Okay, and let's see, I think she needs a little bit of eyeliner and some eyelashes. So I'm going to go into my brush tools. Along with the um, Bellevue Actions, I also get these little eyelash brushes, and you have to load those into your, um, into your brush palette. So I'm going to click on my brush palettes, load them up, and if you, if you were just loading in the Actions, you need to go to this little icon that looks like a little gear, and go to... Um, load brushes and find those brushes that brush set and load them into your palette. I already have them in here, I don't need to do that again. So I'm gonna create a new layer and put it above all my other actions and click on the brush set again and I'm gonna click uh, lash number 2371 for the left and it shows it really really big so I need to drop that down probably at about 200 or so. 
a little bit bigger. 250, 279, it's a little bit bigger. Maybe about 300. All right, so now that I have it set about 311 for this particular image, I'm going to go ahead and click on my new layer. And I have, make sure you have black selected too for the color. I think that might be a little too dark. I'm going to go and sample some of the color from her original. Um, it's kind of a blackish brown color. I'm going to zoom in, click on the brush again, and click in there. Still does not look dark enough. Okay, but I'm going to go into Edit, Adjust, Levels, and just bring the depth of that color up a little bit more. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Click OK. And I'm going to ma um, use the Warp tool to bring that lash in a little bit more because it doesn't quite look like it's on the lash line or the, of the eye. So I'm just going to warp it into there. And they look a little big, so I'm going to bring it down ever so slightly. That looks good. All right, I'm going to hit return. All right, and I think I might need a little bit of rotating on that. Good. And so bring it in, readjust. Perfect. Zoom back out. And I'm going to lower the opacity because I think it just does. It just looks a little fake. So I just want to give a natural appearance to it. Let me bring that back so you can see it. Back to 100. Okay, there is 100%. I drag it down to about 75, and I think that looks a little bit better. Okay, and um, call this, rename this layer so I don't lose it. Left eyelash, return, and then I make a new layer to put the bottom eyelash on. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna do the bottom eyelash. I have to change the size of the other one, anyways. Uh, okay. And I'm going to go to the bottom left eyelash, so it's going to be number 1803 for me. And again, it comes in really, really big. And let's see, probably about 250. Good. All right. I'm going to click my color in there, and it looks okay. Still need to adjust it a little bit. I'm going to do the rotate tool and zoom in a little bit more. Okay. Bring that in, and again, I'm going to need to warp it because it's not quite fitting on that lash line just right. Good, and bring it in a little bit, get a little spidery there. Okay, click return, and again, I'm going to lower the opacity to 75 for this one. Now it looks a little more realistic, and then zoom back out. And I see a little bit of anything here that needs to be edited. I'm going to go to my cloning tool on the original layer and just edit all this out. Okay, now I'm going to run the action for um, eyeliner. So I'm going to click above or below. Um, the eyelashes to the neutral eyelash palette and select my eyeliner. Here is eyeliner, eyeshadow, eyeliner palette, and play to run the action. And again, this one is going to give you a lot of options for colors. And I want to pick the ash because I don't want it to be too terribly dark. I don't want it to be extremely black. So I'm just going to dust it on here. Right now, the opacity for that layer set at 60. The opacity, I want to bring it up to 25 for this one. For the brush. And again, I need to get a smaller brush here. I like to get the ones with a little bit of texture to them because I click and click and click and click the color into there. So it looks more like it was lined on there rather than one solid bit of line where you do. Oops, sorry. One solid line of color. I'm going to show you really quick what that looks like. One solid line of color doesn't look very natural to me. So I go and I select something with a little bit more texture. A little bit smaller. And I just click it on there. You can see the difference. It looks more like it's eyeliner that was actually placed onto the eye. This is just a me thing. <laughs> And it may take it, make it take a little bit longer, but it's just the effect that I like. 
And I think I need to lower the opacity a little bit. Okay. So I'm just kind of just clicking to darken in the eyeliner. And I'm putting it into the wet line of the eye. And again onto the bottom lid. And I think I need a little bit more opacity for this one. I click it a little bit on here. Click and click and smudge. Click and smudge. Click and smudge it on there. I think it's looking a little fake here. I think I need to clean that up. Zoom out. Yeah, I don't really like it. I'm gonna take that off. I don't like it as much. I think I need to pick a different color. Okay, I'm just going to remove that mask. And I think I'm going to pick a lighter brown for this one, for the bottom lid. Alright, and change my tool again. Brush to a different one. And bring the opacity up for this one. And I'm masking on using the white layer or the, the white uh, color box to mask on my color. Okay, I'm going to go into the wet line here, add a little color to that. And add a little bit more of this color to the other part of the eye, to the upper eye. Okay, I think it's looking really good. I think I need a Maybe mask off on this one spot a little bit. So it's really dark. And I think it might be something I actually have to clone out. I think it's on the original layer. Let me turn the eyeliner off, turn off this eyelash. Yep, it's on the original layer. So I'm going to go to my cloning tool and I'm just going to clone out that little glop of eye mascara I think it was on from when the makeup artist did it. Just gonna take it off a little. So I can even up the eyeliner that I'm putting on. Okay, I'm gonna turn those two layers back on, and that looks a lot better. I'm zoom back out. Okay, and then we're gonna have to repeat the same thing with the right eye. And I'm gonna add a little bit more color here onto this layer. And here I can add a little bit more ash. Little. Okay, so I'm back out. Good. And the same thing with the other eye. I'm going to go get and um, make a new layer for eyelash and call that left bottom eyelash. And create a new layer for the right eyelash, right top eyelash. All right, and go into my brush set. And click on number 2371. I'm um, and lower the size to about 250. It might have to go a little bit more for this side because it's a little bit larger. Wait, my two, let's see, two, 325. Oops, 25, 325. And that's a good size. I still have my color selected. And I'm going to need to darken it. Which just levels and drop down the midtones a little. I'm sorry, bring down the midtones ever so slightly. Good. Matching that other one. And bring down the opacity 75. And then I'm going to use my warp tool and my rotating tool to put it right on that eye. It's a little bit more rotation. Good. And I think I need a warp. Edit free transform to warp and just bring the eyelash in. Good. Hit return. All right, and we turn it on and off. 
You can see the difference there. It really cover, it does a good job of covering up that uh, mistake in the eyeliner right there. Okay, and then I'm going to add, um, I already have my uh, eyeliner palette open, so I'm going to click on Ash and choose my brush and make it a little bit smaller and I'm going to color in some of that. And again, I'm just clicking in the color. Just adding little da dapples here and there that I need to fill it in. And I'm going into the eyelash and the wet line to kind of add a little bit of there where there's um, some bald spots. Okay, and then I bring in the long lash and I get a lighter brown. I'm going to click in some color there. Okay, and then I'm going to make a new layer to add in the bottom eyelash. So right, bottom, eyelash. And go into my um, brush palette and click on 1803. And I'm going to bring it down to about 250. Yeah, it's a good size right there. Click in the color. Bring it down to 75% for the opacity of that layer. Okay. And I think I might not need to do any warping for that one. I think I need a little bit. Edit, free transform to warp. And I'm just going to bring it down just a little bit to line it up with the rest of the eyelashes that are naturally there. Good. Let's zoom out. And I think we're pretty much there. Oh, I see a little bit of something there I want to get rid of. I'm going to go into the original. And I'm going to clone out this little bit, holding down my option key. I'm going to clone out a little bit of that color. Just looks distracting and it looks like a mistake in the makeup. I'm just going to take that out. Okay, zoom back out. There we go, much better. I think I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. There's just a little something in there I need to get rid of. Okay. All right, we're almost there. I'm going to close some of these up and I'm going to make a group for this eye for the eyelashes. So I'm going to put those all into a folder and call them eyelashes. And store those away into this folder. Drag it and drag it into the folder and close it up. All right. So next we're going to do the um, lipstick. So I'm going to go above the teeth and run the action for the lipstick. Uh, lipstick palette and hit play. Run that action. And this is going to give you a lot of options for different lipstick colors as well. So you click on that folder and drop it down. You see a few options there. I'm going to find something that's very similar to her color already. Um, I think it's the light carnation color. It looks pretty close. And I'm going to get a new brush. And I need to stick it a little bit smaller so I can get to the size of her lips. And I'm just going to dust it on. Oops, I need to actually click on the layer mask there. Oops, I have a little problem. History, go back. Okay. And just brush on a little bit of color. And I think I need to lower the opacity for that layer. And maybe lower the brush to about 50. I just want a little bit of, of lipstick color. Okay, and I need a smaller brush for the top lip. Good. I'm just going to follow the lip line. And I see some I went a little bit over on this of the face. I'm just going to bring it back, mask over it. Got a little bit on the gums. Just to bring it back. I'm going to zoom out so you can see that. I think that's a little dark. So I'm going to lower the opacity of the entire layer. Bring it down to about 25, 23. 25. Good. And with it, 
without with it without just need a little bit more color. All right, and now I'm going to do the flyaways. Oh, you know what? I see some of her eyebrows I need to fix there. Okay, I'm going to go into the original layer and hold down my Option key with my cloning tool, and I'm going to clone a little bit of this eye eyebrows into here. Okay, and then I'm going to clone out a little bit that's sticking out. Individually get rid of each one of these little bits of um, eyebrow hair. I want to reshape them just slightly. All right, it's getting there. It's a lot of going back and forth and making sure you're covering everything that you want to cover and not taking away too much so where they don't look recognizable. Bring in a little bit of eyeshadow, eyebrows there. Okay, so back out. All right, and see now the flyaways. <clears throat> okay, next I'm going to finish up the flyaways. Finally. Okay, and I'm going to go into the original layer, the background layer. I'm going to use the clone tool, and I'm going to start off with the big brush at first. Okay, and I'm going to get all these big pieces out. I'm going to click on my option um, key because I want to select the background. And I'm just going to oh, make sure my opacity set at 100. And I'm just going to cover up these flyaways. Let me zoom in a little bit. Let me see if the healing brush does a little bit better job. I'm sorry. Let's click and hold. Oh, there it is. Healing brush tool. Yeah, yeah, I think the healing brush will do a little bit better job with this because I'm getting too much of this um, extra background, um, some darker background color that I don't want in there. I'm going to use my patch tool to kind of cover this up right here and drag that over. Okay, still there. Much better. Okay, then back into healing brush tool. Okay, and selecting the background right there, just going to cover up all these little pieces, just the big ones. I'm get a bigger brush. Okay, zoom out a little bit. Some of these bigger spots right here. So just going over everything. Oh, that doesn't work as well. Now I'm gonna use the cleaning tool. And get in there with a the big brush. Get some larger spots. And as I get closer to the hairline, I'm going to have to lower the size of my brush because I want to get a finer point so it doesn't look... Like if I go into the hair, you can see it just looks fake. And I'm going to zoom out really quick. You can see that there's a little too much gradation in there. That doesn't look good. So I have to go to a finer point when I do that. I'm going to get in a little bit closer. Let me zoom out a little more. Okay, I'm just going in and getting all this big stuff out of there. Oops. There's a lot of large clumpy flyaways here. Clean those up. Okay, anytime I see a little too much color come in there and it's too dark, I'm just going to select some of the background and cover over that patch that's just a little too dark. Okay, come in here on the hair. Okay, now I have to get a finer brush. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to get much smaller. And you can see how it went from this big to this big. So you need to get a smaller point just to get these little smaller pieces out. I think I need to get a little bit bigger still. Okay. And it's just, it's just a lot of option click, option click until you get to the point where you clean up everything that's obvious and noticeable because you could be doing this all day if you really wanted to and fix every little flaw, but I don't want to overdo it. She's not a fashion model. She's just a, 
a, um, an everyday woman just wants to look beautiful in her image. She doesn't want to look like a supermodel. She just wants to look the most beautiful she can possibly look. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to zoom out. I'm getting there. And do a little bit more here. Okay, and Okay, and I'm going to get a smaller brush because I need to get into the smaller or finer point here. And just clean up this extra bit of the gradient from um, the larger cloning tool. And it's going to come in a little bit sharper. And get rid of some of this extra. Good. And I'm trying to not put too many extra ridges in here that aren't necessarily needed to be in there. Smoothing out. Go ahead and smooth out a little bit more over here. And let's see. Smooth a little bit right here. I'm not getting rid of all the flyaways, just the major ones that just are distracting. They don't add to the image. Okay, it's just back and forth. Let me zoom out. You can start seeing it's a huge difference right there. Let me go back to the beginning in the history palette so you can see. In the beginning, here's the progress. Huge difference. All I did was clean up the major points in the hair. Now I'm going to use the um, flawless skin. I'm going to go over her arms and her neck just to add a, uh, make it match her face a little bit here. I'm going to get a larger brush. Yeah, a little bit bigger, and yeah, maybe a little bit less. Okay, and with the opacity set at about 50, I'm gonna go over your skin. Oops, I need to get not the cloning tool, but an actual brush. <laughs> Reset the size again. Sorry about that. Sometimes I work so fast I forget what I'm work what which um, tool I'm using there. So in the flawless skin, I'm just gonna go over. I'm gonna mask on. A little bit of color. I'm gonna go over the hair. It doesn't really show. It's not that big a deal. It doesn't. If anything, it's just gonna de-emphasize some of those other flyaways that are there. And just go over a little bit of there and a little bit of the neck and a little bottom chin. And we're looking good. And I see a flyaway here on her forehead. I want to get rid of. So I'm gonna go into the um, healing brush tool. Select a small brush and oops, I gotta go into not not the full skin layer. Go into the original layer, the background layer, and go over that a little bit there. Oh, the brush isn't working as well as I want it to, so I'm gonna use the clone tool. The brush is, usually works better for spots. Little bits here, little bits there. I'm gonna go to bring up the opacity on that. That looks better. And just option clicking to match the color because you can see that it's getting a little darker the closer I get into the hairline and I'm actually losing it right here. So here I'm going to have to lower the opacity. So I want it to be a little more subtle. Okay, I think that's not working. I'm going to go back into history and get rid of my cloning. Try that again. I'm going to use the healing brush with this area here. I'm just going to spot heal. There we go. That's much better. I'm going to do spot by spot until I get to an area where it's just a little bit more smooth. Option click, option click to match the skin around it. Here we go, I'm getting a little closer to where I can just drag it across. It looks better. You see another one right here. And another one here. Another one here. Now I'm looking so much better. Oops. Good. Zoom back out. And there we go. So again, here's a before. I'm going to the history. Here's a before, and you can see all the different things we had to take out and our after. She still looks natural and beautiful. All right. 
Well, I hope that helps you with some of your editing problems, and um, I'll come back to you again soon with some more tips. Happy editing!